It is 7 p.m. on the dot, and I call the meeting to order. Can I have a roll call? Dustin Allred. Here. Jane Billman. Here. Andrew Fell. Here. Tyler Fitch. Here. Lou Hopkins. Unmuted here. Thank you. Deborah McFarland. Present. Jonah Weisskopf. Here. And Shen Shi Yu. Here. Great, we do have a quorum. So uh, are there any changes to the agenda? There are not any changes to the agenda. Great. We have the minutes from the March 4th, 2021 Plan Commission regular meeting. Any uh, motion in regard to the minutes? I'll move to approve the minutes. <laughs> Mr. Motion by Mr. Fell, second by Ms. Billman. Are there any uh, changes to the minutes? No, in that case, we'll have a uh, roll call vote on this, please. Uh, Jane Billman. Yes. Andrew Fell. Yes. Tyler Fitch. Yes. Lou Hopkins. Yes. Deborah McFarland. May I abstain? Yes, you may. Thank you. Jonah Weisskopf. Yes. Chen Chi Yu. Yes. And Dustin Allred. Yes. Great. The minutes are approved. Uh, now we have some communications uh, that I'll go ahead and uh, summarize. Uh, we have one from a Tom Sheehan. They're both pertaining to the uh, case involving the uh, uh, the alley. The yes. uh, they're all <laughs> pertaining to the special use permit for the Montessori school. Correct. And uh, they are both positive. We have a Thomas Sheehan, excellent addition to downtown. Uh, and then we have... Uh, the other piece is actually a compilation of five. They weren't all able to be combined. Okay. Uh, we have uh, Gene K. Gene Kaprowski, who's, who's very positive. Um, I only see the two. Uh, if you scroll down on the one for Thomas Sheehan, it's oh. six pages. Oh, okay. And each one of the pages is a separate email. Great. Okay. We also have Dennis and Aisha Cheramonte. Uh, they're excited about it. Um, we have uh, Tom Foe. Uh, he's excited about it. Very positive. Uh, does uh, caution that we should consider putting a slow sign or a speed bump uh, somewhere in the vicinity of the school, slow down traffic. Um, we've got uh, Catherine Fitzgerald. She's very excited about it, very positive. Um, we've got uh, Beads and Botanicals, impact on parking, uh, a little bit of concern, um, but she doesn't think there would be a problem overall. Um, and finally, uh, Scott, Scott, Scott G. Um, Probably Crane Alley. Yeah, could be. Uh, and uh, wants to know if it would uh, impact gaming licenses. Um, noted that city staff told him it would not impact liquor licenses. Are there any other laws that would be affected? So we could ha have Mr. Ricci speak to those questions during the case. Yes. Okay. Um, so that's the, the uh, uh, communications. Uh, we don't have any continued public hearings or old business. So we do have a new public hearing that the communications were pertaining to. Uh, we've got plan case 2416 SU21. Request by Norman Baxley on behalf of Montessori School of Champaign-Urbana for a special use permit to allow operation of a school at 121 Goose Alley in the B4 Central Business District. Mr. Ricci. Yes, and I will attempt to share my screen. You've got it. Okay. Um, Montessori School of Champaign-Urbana represented by Monica Huang, 
uh, who should be in attendance tonight as a panelist um, request a special use permit to operate a school at 121 Goose Alley in the B4 Central Business Zoning District. Um, this property is owned by Baxley Media Group represented by Norman Baxley, which applied for and supports the request. Uh, the zoning ordinance allows an elementary, junior, high, or senior high school in the B4 district with a special use permit. Um, the school is owned by the Montessori Society of Champaign-Urbana, a not-for-profit corporation comprised of the parents of children enrolled in the school. Um, it was founded in 1962, and after many years of small, sometimes multiple sites, the city purchased, excuse me, the society purchased the school's current location in Savoy. Programs at this site are directed towards children from kindergarten through secondary age. And this expansion would um, create a new location with diversified educational opportunities, uh, including more experiential activities that are well suited for older children. Uh, and this expansion would also create additional capacity for more young students at the current facility. So it's an overall expansion of the school's capacity. Um, the property is located uh, on the north side of Main Street between North Race Street and North Broadway Avenue. It is the north half of the Cinema Gallery property um, and is a combination of one and two story. The most recent tenant in this site was Pixo. Uh, it's approximately 3,300 square feet across one and two story portions of the building. Um, and there's a dedicated entrance for this unit on the north side of the building and a shared entrance on the east side here along Crane Alley, which is in this area a pedestrian way. Uh, the south half of the property is occupied by Cinema Gallery and Urbana Dance Academy. Um, and nearby uses, of course, include food sales and services, professional services, retail trade, and recreation. Table one in the staff report summarizes the current zoning, uh, which this entire area is zoned B4 Central Business District. And um, for the future land use, the entire area is designated for a central business uses in the area. Uh, the school would plan to assign the oldest students in their system, 10 to 14 year olds, to this new location. Uh, there's two main benefits to this. Uh, there are new experiential opportunities that are better appreciated by older students, including going to the library, um, collaborating on gardening with local restaurants, taking art and music lessons at the Community Center for the Arts, uh, doing science experiments and environmental programming at Boneyard Creek. Um, also, as you might notice uh, from the correspondence that was included, uh, there were um, was at least one, two yoga studios that were interested in having them come and uh, participate in their programming. And then the other benefit that was mentioned was that it would free up capacity for younger students at the current facility, um, which has on-site uh, playgrounds and recess equipment that is required for younger students, but not for these older students. Uh, the proposed school would use the existing layout of the space. No renovations are planned. Uh, and this current layout with its um, open format is well suited for the Montessori style of education. Uh, you can look at the floor plan, I won't go through it. It's already equipment, equipped with bathrooms, a kitchen, and a dining area. And the school is planning to sign a three-year lease with the applicant. Um, the requirements for a special use permit are summarized in the staff report. Um, I'll hit some of the highlights later, but this request does meet all three requirements. Um, the main thing I would like to focus on are uh, that the proposed use would be designed, located, and operated so that it would not be unreasonably injurious 
or detrimental to the district in which it shall be located or otherwise injurious to the public welfare. Um, at this time, there are currently 10 students enrolled for next year's program. Ideally, they'd like to have 17 students. Um, this acknowledges current COVID restrictions, uh, which according to the school head have recently been reduced from uh, six feet of social distancing space to three feet by the um, a school regulatory board. Uh, they'd like to increase this to 22 students for the following school year and up to 28 students for the 23-24 school year. This, of course, would be dependent on student interest, staff availability, and uh, continued social distancing requirements uh, due to the pandemic. Um, the school would like to limit the duration of this special use permit to this three year time frame, allowing both the school and the city a trial period to determine if the school is a good fit for the downtown location. And if there is student interest, the school would like to consider offering limited after school programming until 5.30 p.m. for up to 20% of the local student body. They currently are doing after school programming at the um, Savoy facility, and they would like to offer that for a few students whose you know, parents or family household, both parents might work until 5.30. Uh, current, uh, current parking and loading uh, was an issue that staff attempted to address with the school. School hours are from 8 to 3 p.m. and students arrive between 8 and 8.15 and depart between 2.45 and 3 o'clock. The B4 zoning distance has no minimum parking requirements, but the school plans to rent three parking spaces in the city parking deck for the two teachers and administrator. Students will be encouraged to walk, bike, or take the bus to school, and parents will be encouraged to establish carpools with other families. All of this is in an effort to reduce car traffic on site. Uh, acknowledging that it is not always possible to walk, bike, or take the bus to school due to weather or finances or even personal preference, the school has developed a plan for students to be safely dropped off and picked up from the school. Um, this proposed loading and parking plan um, attempts to compensate for, uh, you know, pre and post COVID uh, situations. Um, the yellow line is kind of your when the world returns to normal sort of situation. Um, drivers dropping off children would come in to lot one and find a legal parking space in one of the 43 parking spaces in this parking lot. And then uh, students would walk to the site, which is the Green Star. And then parents would pull out back onto Water Street and exit east or west. Um, during COVID times, uh, this past year, the city had uh, made accommodations for local merchants to have outdoor dining uh, facilities. Um, Rose Bowl Tavern rented or, you know, reserved uh, the east half of lot one. And um, so traffic would then have to leave out Goose Alley and exit onto North Broadway. They would still find a par legal parking space in one of the 22 parking spaces on the west side of lot one or they could also find parking spaces in lot two, which is partially reserved uh, by Bunny's Tavern. Uh, there are also um, 60 on-street parking spaces within the adjacent block of this area. So, you know, students wouldn't have to walk more than one block to get to school. Um, and let's see. I think that's about it. Um, and even if they are walking, you know, from an on street parking space, uh, you know, the, the route is connected by well maintained sidewalks, uh, signalized intersections or marked crosswalks. Um, so the city is trying to um, keep for safe transit of students, as well as their parents if they have to walk them in. Um, and then moving on to daily activities, um, because they're older, these students are not required to have daily outdoor recess. In exchange, some educational programming would take students to downtown establishments. 
art and music at the art school, environmental studies at Boneyard Creek, research at the library. The children will also be allowed to go on group lunches to nearby restaurants, all within walking distance along safe pedestrian routes. This would be limited to once per week for the first half of the initial school year. School programming goals also include collaborating with local merchants, such as gardening with Courier Cafe or organizing fundraisers featuring local products. And then uh, the last issue that staff attempted to address is uh, liquor licenses. Current state liquor legislation normally prohibits the issuance of new liquor licenses to retail liquor establishments within 100 feet of an existing church, school, hospital, or similar use. The city liquor commissioner can waive this protective buffer if the protected party, in this case, the school waives their right to the buffer. In this instance, after the school is established, new liquor establishments would not be allowed within 100 feet of the school unless the school waives their right to the buffer. Monica is talking to the school board about signing such a waiver. Um, in summary, the use of the property as a school would bring more young people and their families downtown, which could be very beneficial to nearby restaurants and to the downtown community as a whole. The school meets the criteria for special use permit approval with staff recommending some conditions to reduce potential conflicts with neighboring uses. Um, in summary, uh, Montessori school requests a special use permit to operate a school at 121 Goose Alley. The property is owned by Baxla Media Group, which applied for and supports the request. The proposed school would be conducive to the public at this location due to its ease of access by walking, bicycle, mass transit, or by car. Um, the school and property owner have agreed to work together to install bicycle parking loops um, in front of the school along Goose Alley to facilitate bicycle parking. The proposed school also would not be injurious or detrimental to the B4 zoning district um, because planned enrollment loads are reasonable and would be capped. Student loaning can be conducted within public parking areas in a safe manner. Daily activities would not pose unreasonable demands on the district and liquor license issuance would not be affected. And the proposed use would use the existing building without significant modification, maintaining its current level of conformity with the B4 zoning district. Um, in response to Scott's um, inquiry about the school's impact on gaming licenses, um, we had a, an, another phone inquiry from Bruce Brown of the American Legion, which also has some video gaming terminals. I responded to him by phone and seemed to answer his questions. Um, the school can move in to proximity of an establishment with video gaming terminals or a, um, a video gaming hall. Um, a new facility would not be allowed to move in next to the, um, the proposed school if it was established. Um, the city has, um, uh, requires a 100 foot buffer between a school or church and um, establishments with video gaming terminals. This would block approximately six storefronts along the north side of Main Street from having video gaming terminals in the future. Um, a lot of downtown is already blocked from establishing a new gaming hall because of proximity to existing gaming terminals at bars already in the area. Um, so the school would have little impact on establishing a new gaming hall, which still has to get licenses for both liquor and gaming from the mayor. Um, it would have some blocking of new video gaming terminals for new facilities along the north side of Main Street. So that is the response to Scott's question. Um, this exhibit is uh, showing again the location of available 
um, off street and on street parking um, that is open to the public in proximity to the school. Um, staff recommends that the plan commission recommend to city council approval of the proposed special use permit in plan case 2416 SU21 with the following conditions that operation must be in general conformance with the floor plan submitted with the application that parking and loading must be in general conformance with the plan submitted that this special use permit would expire on August 31st 2024 the school may apply for another special use permit for this or another location as permitted by the zoning ordinance that school enrollment would be capped at 28 students, that the school must rent at least three parking spaces, and that the school must work with the property owner to install bicycle loops on the property. And that is the end of my staff report. Thank you, Mr. Ricci. Do we have any uh, questions for Mr. Ricci? Mr. Allred. Hey, Marcus, uh, a few know. questions. So Absolutely. why <clears throat> essentially lock the, the floor plan? I know it says general conformance and we usually do something like this with a site plan, but how they are using the interior space of the building, I'm not sure why that's so important and maybe has the potential to create problems in terms of flexibility. So I'm just curious about that. Um, second question, has to do with something that I asked you, um, an email related to conflicts uh, with um, cannabis uses, a variety of different uses. Um, the new med facility as a medical cannabis dispensary, um, that buffer, does this create a conflict if a school gets located here with that facility in terms of the requirement for medical dispensaries. I wasn't clear in your response. So I just wondered if you could talk about that again. And then the, um, the recommendations address future liquor licenses, but what about current liquor licenses? Do those, are those just sort of grandfathered in or are they then in some kind of non-conformance or does that create an issue with those? All excellent questions. So um, the only reason that staff mentioned the current floor plan and conformance to that um, is it is one of our default um, conditions that uh, usually gives the plan commission some confidence that the interior is not going to be changed in a major fashion uh, or possibly increase or change occupancy levels. Uh, we have no requirement that the floor plan stay static. Um, the other reason I listed it like that is because the applicant um, and the school both said that they weren't planning on making any renovations. So uh, that we thought that was capitalizing on the fact that they're not making any changes to the interior uh, to give both plan commission, city council, and the neighborhood uh, confidence in that it wasn't going to be going undergoing major renovations. I have no problem taking that out if uh, plan commission recommends that to city council. Um, item number two, the um, question about cannabis. Okay, so uh, new Era slash New Med, I think it's called New Era now, I think is both considered an adult and a medical dispensary. Um, so going through the menu of cannabis uses that the city currently permits throughout the city. According to my analysis, the proposed school would not affect any future cannabis uses downtown as they are either already prohibited from downtown or there is not a school buffer requirement depending on each particular cannabis use. Um, the only cannabis uses that are buffered from schools are medical dispensaries, which is a 2,500 foot, uh, sorry, uh, medical cultivation centers and adult dispensaries. Um, neither of these uses is currently allowed in the downtown area. Um, just by 
the zoning districts and buffers from things like residential districts and whatnot. Um, I don't have all of the details on how those uh, buffered areas were created, but those were researched when the cannabis tax amendment was proposed. If you like, I do have a, a nice interactive map that I can go through uh, that Principal Planner Garcia put together where you can look at any given parcel in the city and it will tell you what uses are available. So I'd be glad to share that with you. Um, so, and then the only cannabis uses that are buffered from schools are medical dispensaries and adult dispensaries. And um, since adult dispensaries are already not permitted downtown because of the proximity of new med, new era at Vinan University, adding a school downtown won't change that status quo. The only medical dispensary is also the new med, uh, which is within a thousand feet of downtown. It's not, medical dispensaries are not permitted downtown already and adding a school won't change that. The only adult uses currently allowed downtown are craft growers and infusers. And because those two uses don't require a buffer from a school, then adding a school to downtown won't all of a sudden create a zone in which craft growers and infusers are not permitted. So does that make sense? I think so. That's it. Okay. Digest that. Okay. Um, since since one other person asked about this, let me see if I can quickly go to the what we call our Canagis map, Canagis map. Um. Okay, I'll reshare the screen. Okay, can you see this okay? Kevin Garcia created this and it's pretty amazing. All right, so here you can see Oh, this is as far as we can zoom in. Okay, um, this is 121 Goose Alley. And as you can see over here on the right, there is a menu of the allowed adult cannabis uses. We've got cultivation centers, craft growers, dispensaries, infusers, processors, and transporters. Um, this little information box tells us at this parcel it's a summary. It says craft growers are permitted by right and infusers are permitted by right. Um, the picture shows us that cultivation centers are currently allowed in this little strip by right or in the orange areas by special use permit. By clicking on the different uses, Is, oh, there we go. Um, here is where craft growers are allowed. Again, we go back to 121 Goose Alley. And going back to craft growers. Takes a while for this to load itself. Um, this is 121 Goose Alley and craft growers are allowed by right. It's in the green. Um, adding a school won't change that because there is no buffer requirement between craft growers and a school. An adult use dispensary, as soon as it loads, which is different from a medical use dispensary, 
Uh, they're handled by our zoning ordinance differently. Currently, a medical, uh, an adult use dispensary isn't allowed anywhere in downtown until you get past Elm Street or, you know, over to where North Central comes in. Adding a school is not going to change that because it's already not allowed. An adult use infuser. Can I ask a question here, Marcus? Sure. So I think you said that the, the buffer for adult use, which includes new med now, is 2,500 square feet. It's 2,500 feet? Um, for adult use, I believe is 100 feet. And for medical use is 2,500 feet. But 2,500 feet is less than the distance to Newman. Right. I mean, it's not less than, excuse me, the other way around. Is Newman really 2,500 feet away? It's almost 1,000 feet away. Yeah, but that's not 2,500. This, this map is only for adult use dispensaries, not for medical use dispensaries. So new med is both adult use and medical use. And so it has two buffers on it. If I understand, I mean, I may, I may be asleep here, but mm. if the school came first, New Med could not be a medical distribution facility because it's within 2,500 feet of the school. Correct. Since it already exists? There are other schools in this area that are already buffering out dispensaries. Um, Okay. I don't think it's. Somewhere I think it's, I'm missing what's going on. So it, um, I'll believe I, you. <laughs> something doesn't. I, I'm not understanding something. I think it's 2,500 feet for medical cultivation and 1,000 feet for medical dispensary. I think You're those right. are the buffer distances. Oh, okay. You're right. All You're right. right. All right. So it's 1,000 feet, and then we're okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Dustin. Uh, my one day worth of some of, of research on this is not perfect. But the other point is there are other schools and churches in this region that are already buffering out and prohibiting cannabis uses. Um, and, uh, and so adding a school in does not change the status quo of which uses are allowed and not allowed. So going back to this, infusers are already allowed by right. And because there is no buffer between a school and an infuser, they will continue to be allowed by right. Um, processors are I believe excluded from the area already. And that's not gonna change by adding a school. Um, cannabis transporters, I believe are permitted. Nope, they're already excluded. And adding a school in would not change that. So, in answer to Dustin's question, some uses are permitted already, some uses are prohibited already. Adding the school in downtown won't change a use's current um, permitted to not permitted. Did that make sense? Okay, um, and then the final question was liquor licenses. Um, so, uh, a new retail establishment cannot be located within 100 feet of an existing church school, home for the aged, veterans, etc. 
um, a school can move in next to a retail liquor license establishment. So it's only a one-way prohibition. Um, renewals of existing established liquor licenses are exempt from this school buffer. Um, so just because a, a school or a church or a hospital moves in, a bar can continue to renew its existing liquor license. Now, I did not research as to if they wanted to expand their liquor license, like they're doing beer now and they want to do spirits later. It's possible that because that's not considered a renewal, it's considered a new license or an upgrade of a license that might be affected by a, a new school or ho hospital moving in. However, in this case, we've already determined that the liquor commissioner can waive the protective buffer for new liquor licenses for retail establishments if the protected entity signs a waiver. So we've already discussed with the school, uh, they are going to discuss it with their school board, but they feel that you know, if that's a condition on establishing the school, that they would be willing to sign a waiver, um, waiving their protective buffer from new liquor licenses. Uh, they are fully cognizant of the fact that they are moving in next to Roseboat Tavern and Bunnies and Crane Alley and American Legion, and they are not concerned about, you know, the liquor serving environment. So is that all of your questions or a good answer for your questions? Yes, thank you. Okay, absolutely. And thank you for bringing them up. Thank you, Mr. Allred. Any, Mr. Fell, I think you had your hand up. One yeah, I, have a, I have a couple of questions. One, I think we're all clear on what's happening, but I'm a little concerned about posterity because the first page of their application says they're asking you to put a church on this property. So uh, on their special use application, they're requesting uh, a church. So can we officially get that changed? Yes, you can, and that's my fault because I think I helped fill out that drop box for that. So okay. I will officially um, correct their application to say school and not church. Thank okay. you for mentioning that. Um, uh, I have a, a bunch of kind of building code related questions. So I guess I ask, well, first I'll ask staff, has this been run by building safety? No, it has not. Okay. Um, is there a representative from Smith Forget here, perhaps? Not that I know of. Okay. Uh, is it appropriate to bring these comments up now or later during the discussion portion? Um, I, I will leave that up to Mr. Fitch. Yeah. I, if it's a question, go ahead, Mr. Feld. If it's uh, well, it's, no, I'll, well, it yeah, say, it, sounds like you're not sure. So let's be, say. no, it's more common, I think. Yeah. So okay. I'll okay. Say great. Great. Um, uh, any further questions? I do want to follow up on the, the traffic question, uh, speed suppression. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not even sure what the trap, the uh, speed limit is in downtown. Is it 25? I believe it's 35. 30, 35. I, okay, we'll see. Uh, so was I thought it was lower than that, but whatever it is, is is this going to have to become a school zone with all the, the pertinent signage and the, the penalties that come with it um, for speeding in a school zone? Staff discussed that, that. That concern was brought up by Public Works staff. We have not discussed what the triggering requirements are for a school zone. Um, and it's, you know, I don't know what the triggering requirements are for a school zone. Um, you know, there are school, sorry, school age children intensive uses in this area between the library and the Urbana Dance Academy and um, the C4A Art Academy. They're all student oriented. Um, there is a crosswalk, a marked crosswalk across Main Street. There are yeah. signalized intersections at either end. 
uh, and yep. it's well maintained sidewalks. Um, so if you like, we can address that more and dig into what the requirements are for a school zone. I think it's often the case where the entity that's moving in is, you know, requests a school zone and that it might go, then go to traffic commission, but I'm not sure. Well, yeah, I would urge you to uh, research that further as, as far as the specifics of a school zone. Um, and I'll probably want to talk, have, get some opinion from the others about whether other uh, speed suppression, traffic suppression measures might be required. Um, and I will uh, comment that the, the one email that had mentioned about putting in either a speed bump or a slow sign, that was from the proprietor of uh, the C4A um, art and, and uh, music school there at the, corner, the intersection, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, so he is also in the school business um, and that was why he was expressing that. Sure. Okay, any further questions for Mr. Ricci? Okay, well, thank you, Mr. Ricci. Now, let me just quickly uh, talk about the uh, rules for public input in a uh, uh, plan commission meeting. We will, uh, we've had, heard from city staff, and now anyone in favor of uh, the, the petition can address the plan commission. Uh, following that, anyone opposed will be allowed to address the commission. Uh, the uh, petitioner uh, can again address, address the commission at the end to sort of give, give a final argument. And then we'll close the public input portion of the hearing and discuss and possibly vote. So it looks like Mr. Baxley has his hand up. So if you'd like to address the commission, you know, let's see if I can unmute you. Oh, it says you're, you're okay. using Now, you can you hear yeah. me? Yes, we can now. Okay. I, I really, I just wanted to make sure that I was connected. I've been listening to the entire meeting, but I didn't realize it. Am I on camera or? You're not on camera. Okay. All right. Well, at least I'm here. You are. So I'll just stand by until I can respond to any questions. Okay. Now, are there any questions for Mr. Baxley? It looks like there are none. Uh, does anybody else care to address the plan commission on this case? We have a couple of other people who are in attendance uh, or as panelists. Just, uh, you can raise your hand. I can't see most of you. Um, so if you raise your hand using your little hand, raise hand icon, that's the best way to get my attention. There we are, Mr. Vast. Now we can oh, see. Okay. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. So no further, uh, no further commentary than our public input. In that case, I guess we'll close the public input portion of this hearing and, and discuss and uh, possibly vote. So thank you very much. Any, uh, oh, Monica, last minute here. No, I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I, I represent the Montessori School. It's been an eye-opening experience. Um, it's been great working with Norman and Marcus, and we just look forward to um, possibly just exploring this further. So thank you, everyone. Great. Is there any questions for Ms. Baxter? No, doesn't look like it. Thank you very much. Okay, now I will close the, the public input portion and ask the, the uh, Plan commissioners for any uh, discussion. Mr. Fell, I believe you had some items you wanted to discuss. Yes, I have a couple things. I don't want this to in any way uh, sound like I'm, I'm opposed to this. That's not my intent here necessarily. Um, but there's, I have a lot of questions for building safety and I really think building safety needs to look at this uh, in terms of uh, a school use being allowed here under the building code, and I hate to say this, but a, uh, the existing building I'm sure is a is a B use occupancy, and a school is an E use occupancy, which has drastically different requirements under the building code. 
there are some ways to to not circumvent but to work around those issues by using uh, a section of the building code called the historic the existing structures code which urbana does allow the use of so building safety can probably uh, probably has workarounds for most of these issues but for instance one of the things that happens when this is considered an e-use is that public health has regulation over the kitchen and that kitchen is not going to meet public health standards so they can't serve food there as as an e-use so there are issues like that 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 come up with turning turning this building into a school so it it, it needs a really close look between the architect and the staff from building safety so I'm not saying any of those issues aren't aren't workable, but they're going to take some effort, I think. Okay, thank you. Anything further? So, uh, Mr. Hopkins. So, following up on a similar thing, um, ADA compliance. I see one restroom facility that's probably ADA compliant. Uh, the multi-levels and stairways, the way this, it's hard to tell from the floor plan what the levels actually are, but it's reasonably clear that there are places in this space that are not accessible. Um, and that's, I guess what I really want to do is uh, sort of reinforce what I think Andrew was getting at, which at one level, these are not our issues. So it seems to me we could focus on our issues for a special use permit. But I think it's important, as Andrew said, to point out that there are other hurdles here that may actually be more difficult to deal with than getting past us. <laughs> I, I'll, I'll kind of piggyback on that a little bit, I think, Lou, that, that and, and Marcus, I guess this goes to do we approve this plan? Because I think as a plan commission, we can approve the special use permit, but I in no way do I want to tie that special use permit to the plan that we see in their application. If we right. can approve a special use permit just as a special use permit, that's a totally different animal. So go ahead, go ahead Mr. Hopkins. That, that's what I was trying to get at. And I'm, I'm also guessing that there will be an occupancy limit derived from the building code uh, assessment and that we don't have to worry about an occupancy limit. Yeah, point taken. I think that goes to Mr. Allred's point from questions with Mr. Ricci about the the uh, requirement that operation be in conformance with the floor plan as submitted, which I'm hearing from both of you is quite possibly not going to work. Right, that remove fair? that right. requirement. Yeah, that's what I thought I heard. Okay, uh, any further discussion on those, those points? Um, what about the issue of, uh, I mean, I think we talked the cannabis thing pretty well, talked that over pretty well, and the liquor license thing pretty well. Um, the, uh, the traffic suppression. Um, I don't think you want a speed bump in the middle of downtown Urbana um, for me, but some signage, if a school zone is required, and I don't know what triggers that either, but uh, certainly you're gonna have the great, a great possibility that younger people will be crossing there at, in the middle of Main Street between the lights. And that's where I would get concerned, having worked on campus for many years and watched people cross it at uh, places where there are not lights and even where there are lights. Um, and it could get dicey. So we're not talking, you know, we're talking up to 28 students and, and that's not a huge number, but uh, I still think I'd, I'd like to see some kind of signage at the very least. And if, this, if the school zone is required, that's, that's a different requirement. I mean, I, I think that's a state thing. That's my understanding. I don't know that for a fact. 
So were you thinking um, signage along Main Street, perhaps at the crosswalk and and or anything along the uh, north south streets like Broadway and race where the east west traffic might be happening or just simply on Main Street? I personally would think that at the uh, the, the unlit, unlit crosswalk in the middle of Maine, some signage would be appropriate there and possibly at the uh, egress of, of uh, Water Street uh, and Goose Alley for the for two, some signage there that says, you know, watch out for cars pulling into the roadway or something like that. The, uh, the one at the, in the middle of uh, Maine could say, you know, slow student pedestrian crossing or something like that. Student and pedestrian crossing. I don't know. I could probably come up with a generalized um, requirement. I, I don't think we can make up signage rules. To, oh, no, no, I, I, I agree. DOT and, and municipal, municipal uh, people have already dealt with that. I, I think we can leave, we can identify the issue and leave its resolution to the responsible parties. Yeah, I'd right. be glad to work with Public Works on that. Yeah, I, I, I agree. I mean, I wasn't going to try to say specifically put the sign that says this here or there. Um, and I don't know what the requirements are. So, but I think it's on the record. So, I'm, I'm okay with that. So, we, if we're ready for a motion, I would make a motion, but I don't have the information in front of me to do it. <laughs> um, I'd be glad to bring that slide back up. Yeah, we're probably ready for a motion. Thanks. Ms. Billen? I'll try it. I move that we approve plan case 2416 SU-21 um, and send it to the city council with a recommendation for approval. Motion by Ms. Billman. Do I have a second? Um, I think we need to modify the motion to delete the Yes. Requirement for the floor plan. Is that okay, Ms. Billman? Yes. Okay, I'll second. Okay, so the motion is to forward to City Council with a recommendation for approval, removing the requirement that the floor plan be in conformance with the special use permit application. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, uh, if we could have a roll call vote, please. Absolutely. Um, Andrew Fell? Uh, yes. Tyler Fitch? Yes. Lou Hopkins? Yes. Deborah McFarland? Yes. Jonah Weisskopf? Yes. Chen Shi Yu? Yes. Dustin Allred? Yes. And Jane Billman? Yes. Okay, that motion passes. And do we have an ETA on City Council or Committee of the Whole? I don't it will be going to Committee of the Whole on April 5th. Great, thank you. Um, and now for new business, we have a Champaign County Zoning Board uh, 002 AM21, a request by Ryan and Amanda Donaldson, uh, D5 Holdings Group, LLC, to amend the z county zoning map to change the district at 3804 Cunningham Avenue from agriculture to B4 General business zoning in order to establish and operate uh, special use uh, in that district. Yes, hi everyone. Uh, this is a request by Ryan and Amanda Donaldson to amend the zoning map at 3804 Cunningham Avenue from County Ag 2 Agriculture to County B4 General Business to allow them to establish and operate the Illini Fire Service. Um, at, the, uh, at the March 11th, 2021 CCZBA meeting, the Champaign County Zoning Board of Appeals 
voted unanimously to enact the rezoning with one special condition. Uh, staff recommends that the plan commission defeat a resolution of protest as presented. Thank you, Ms. Trotter. Does anyone have any questions for Ms. Trotter? I've got a short presentation I can run. Oh, you do? Okay. Yeah. Well, I didn't mean to cut you off. I don't know if you guys typically do that, but uh, it's relatively well, short. We, we would take <laughs> one. I just thought you, you were incredibly efficient. <laughs> I'll try and keep it short. Uh, the property is 7.05 7 acre tract on Cunningham Avenue. It's uh, 0.42 miles from the Urbana city limits uh, within the ETJ. The city should examine the proposed rezoning to ensure compatibility with the existing city ordinances. Uh, the petitioners would like to construct two buildings on the property. The first phase one would house the Illini Fire Service uh, and the second building would be built with office and warehouse space for another construction light company. A special use permit has also been applied for uh, to allow multiple buildings on the same lot in the B4 district. This is a land use map. Uh, the lot was formerly a farmstead, but or all but one of the farmstead buildings have been demolished. Uh, per CCPZD, the proposed use is the most, or most similar is the contractor facility with no outdoor storage or operations, uh, which is permitted by right in County B4. There are adjacent commercial uses and residential uses to the south and west along Cunningham Avenue, and there are agricultural uses to the north and west. Uh, this is the county zoning map. Uh, the property is currently zoned ag uh, or county ag to agriculture and would be rezoned to county before uh, the 2005 comprehensive plan and future land use maps designate this area for agricultural use. However, the property is currently or is on Cunningham Avenue and the US 45 North corridor characterized by commercial uses. Staff finds that the rezoning um, to County B4 general business would be generally consistent with the goals and objectives of the comprehensive plan. This is a site plan for the property. Uh, there are some drainage concerns on the property that were detailed in the CCZBA memo, but the petitioners have proposed significant drainage improvements, including a plan to replace the five inch field, field tile with an eight inch field tile and install a 15 foot deep detention pond to collect stormwater runoff on the site. The development will be served by a private septic tank located more than 100 feet from the drainage tile and the detention pond and no UCSD sewer connection is required. Staff found that the application meets the evaluation criteria for the zoning map amendment. Um, at the March 11th meeting, the Champaign County Zoning Board of Appeals voted unanimously to enact the rezoning with one special condition that the owners of the subject property hereby recognize and provide for the right of agricultural activities to continue on adjacent land consistent with right to farm resolution 3425. And the plan commission has the following options on the requested zoning map amendment. Um, and this is different from our typical cases. Forward the case to city council with a recommendation to defeat a resolution of protest, to defeat a resolution of protest with certain terms and conditions, or to adopt a resolution of protest. And staff recommends that the plan commission forward to city council a recommendation to defeat a resolution of protest. And um, Ryan Donaldson is present and can make a statement if, um, if he chooses to do so. Tyler, you're muted. Nice. <laughs> All right. Um, as I was saying, the we thanks for the staff report. The petitioner can now address the uh, plan commission if you desire, um, and then anyone in support of the petitioner, which I it appears there's nobody else left, uh, but uh, also anyone who's opposed, if they were on the call, could then address us, and then we would close the public input and then discuss and possibly vote. So 
Mr. Donaldson, is there anything you'd like to add to the presentation of Ms. Trotter? I guess not. No hand up. So we'll uh, consider uh, the public input closed for now and uh, proceed with discussion and possibly a vote. So does any plan commissioner have thoughts on this? The only thing I can say is based on the pictures, I'm, I'm not an engineer, but I'm glad they're addressing the drainage. <laughs> because the only thing you can put there now is a boat. Okay, I'll move we send CCZZBA 002 AM 21 to the city council with a recommendation to defeat a resolution of protest. Motion by Mr. Hopkins, do we have a second? Second. Second by Mr. Allred. Uh, any further discussion? Um, in that case, uh, could we have a roll call vote, please? Yes, you can. Uh, Tyler Fitch. Yes. Lou Hopkins. Yes. Deborah McFarland. Yes. Jonah Weisskopf. Yes. Chen Chi Yu. Yes. Dustin Allred. Yes. Jane Billman. Yes. And Andrew Fell. Yes. That motion passes. And is that is that for April fifth as well, uh, as far as the council, or does that go straight to the meeting and not committee of the whole? This will not go to committee of the whole. It'll go to council on the twelfth. Okay. Great. Um, in that case, uh, that concludes our cases. I don't know that we have any audience participation. If there's anybody who wants to address the plan commission uh, for uninterrupted for five minutes. Uh, please raise your hand. Don't see any hands up. So no audience participation tonight. Uh, do we have a staff report? There is no staff report. Yeah, did, last week, Mr. Fell had asked about the PUD case and I th thought that was on the agenda for March 8th. Is that, is that, did they discuss that and take any action, the council? Um, council denied the planned unit development request. Yeah, I tried to find uh, minutes, but I, and I didn't have time to watch the recording, so. Okay. They didn't like how it looked. <clears throat> hmm, okay. Yeah, that's what they said. All right. Um, well, I'll, I'll go back and re review that at some point. Um, anyway, all right. Um, in that case, do we have a study session? There is no study session tonight. Okay, great. Well, thank you very much, and we are adjourned. At 8.03 p.m. At 8.03 p.m. Perfect. Thank you, Mr. Ricci. <laughs>